Welcome back to the second session in VMware Cloud Director 101. And in the previous session, we introduced the concept of vCloud Director, and we talked about some of the abstractions and some of the benefits of self-service and how now I, as a service provider, can provide my customers self-service access to the resources, uh, whereas before, I was having to provide this as a managed service because I couldn't allow them access to a shared infrastructure. And now we're going to dive into a little bit more about the actual um, uh, abstraction itself in terms of the resources that are pulled up, how they're pulled up, and how they're then offered out to tenants and subscribers. So Julian, can you step us through how uh, this works in, st in terms of the resource pools mapped to virtual data centers and then the allocation models? Yeah, sure. So below the green line is what's familiar to vSphere, that's uh, vSphere admins, that's your vCenter, your clusters, and of course your resource pools, which are key to all of this. As a quick reminder, resource pools are allocations of resource, and that's all crucial for cloud and um, private cloud hosting mm -hmm. models. Yeah. Uh, we've seen some new terminology here, some new artifacts appear. So Org VDC, uh, Provider VDC. Now, um, that's vCloud Director terminology, but effectively it's all just resource pools. We're still talking about vSphere. Mm -hmm. So it's just to clarify this point a little further, as all vSphere admins know, a cluster is your root resource pool. So that's one pool of resource already. Abstracted away and hidden in vSphere, but as far as vCloud Director is concerned, that is a resource pool. So what is a provider VDC? That is a declaration, effectively, to vCloud Director of an underlying vCenter. To say, here are some resources, here's my infrastructure, my platform. I want you to further carve this up and offer it to customers. So they're not consumable by customers. When you get to the provider layer, all you've done is declare to vCloud Director the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So a PVDC is a mapping to a vCenter, and of course beneath a vCenter you're going to have one or more clusters. So each cluster can represent a resource pool. If you further break those down into sub-resource pools, now typically in our hosting scenario, customers um, are split into different resource pools. So right. that's effectively multi-tenant shared resource in vSphere. So what we do is we then represent those up into vCloud Director, and the first consumable allocation in vCloud Director is the org VDC. So that's now the tenant-facing virtual data center VDC. That is, in fact, a resource pool. So let's imagine that our cluster here mm -hmm. is our root resource pool, and we've told vCloud Director, take all of this cluster, you now own this, and you can allocate it based on, on how we want to carve this so, up. So essentially, it's these two kind of resource pools I've uh, put here, they now become one resource pool in the provider virtual data center. Yeah. So in this picture, we've actually got two um, VDCs, yeah. uh, sorry, V centers, I should say. So you've used pink, so I'll match you. So we have, in fact, got to declare two provider VDCs. Okay. Great, okay, so we declare those, and it now means we can portion allocations resource into multiple org VDCs. So we could say that this is a mapping, and we could even say that actually this provider VDC is going to be split into two org VDCs. And we have a similar picture on the other side. Now, what's actually happening here is if I then create an org VDC in vCloud Director, that's driving automation. This is where vCloud Director will actually go into vSphere and build the resource pools for you. In other words, the vSphere administrator doesn't have to do the groundwork. So we're offlaying uh, the administration tasks from you know, being heavily vSphere-centric, vCenter work into now a nice UI in VCD. Precisely. Right, got it. So as we stand up a customer and onboard them, we create these org VDCs for customers to consume. All of the components underneath are built automatically by vCloud Director. So my action of creating that org VDC here, uh, told vCloud Director, talk to this provider, which is this vCenter here, go and create me a resource pool for this customer. Yeah, if you want to do a mapping like that. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So how can this be used? Um, so let's keep with the, the provider virtual data center and all VDC kind of nomenclature at the moment and scope. How can this be used by providers to tier their services to provide different levels of service to their orgs? So uh, the unit we are putting in the portal for customers to consume is the org virtual data center, the org VDC. So a virtual data center has certain characteristics in relation to compute and memory and in fact storage as well. So it could be you have something like the gold, silver, bronze model, that kind of approach, where you have a high tier of service, maybe you have um, high-powered compute in one org VDC, and so what you do is you effectively create an org VDC and you set the um, allocation model and the specification for memory and CPU. In the reality, in the background, vCloud Director is building a resource pool that reflects that. So let's say I say I, I need a, an org VDC of 10 gigahertz of vCPU, and that's going to come with uh, 32 gigabytes of memory. 
Well, in the vSphere world, that's created a resource pool, it's allocated that 10 gigahertz, and it's allocated the 32 gig of memory. Could I make different resource pools then for different levels of perhaps storage? If I have extra fast storage at the bottom layer here, extra fast, um, I guess the CPU doesn't really matter because you're going to be pulling that up in any case and specifying that in the org. But really when I'm looking at the, the tiering of service here, I can obviously do it for um, memory and CPU, but if I wanted to, I could then create additional PVC, PVDCs based around different storage tiers perhaps as well. Well, it's even more flexible than that. Okay. So we actually we move the storage policy aspect out. It's independent of the compute and memory. So resource pools take care of our compute and memory in vSphere. We reflect that in vCloud Direct with all VDCs. Separate to that, we have our storage profiles and policies. So back to the vSphere world, we may have a series of um, data stores. And perhaps we've uh, put those into an overall data store um, cluster. So that's standard practice in vSphere. We could then create storage policies to reflect that. So a profile that, that um, might reflect the characteristics of the storage. Mm -hmm. Is it high performance? Is it low performance? Is it replicated? Is it not? So you define what the policies are. vCloud Director is aware of those. So what you can say is, for example, our PVDC can participate in fast storage, normal storage, and replicated. And then we can offer those to the customer. And we can actually choose which all VDCs participate. So we can have an all VDC data center with perhaps one storage policy and another org VDC with different storage policies. We as the provider choose what they are. Excellent, so there you go, you heard now how you can tier your services, how your vSphere administrator can get a more abstracted view and doesn't have to now go into vCenter to create his resource pools. Next up we're going to talk about allocation models.